Welcome back to the Across the Pod NFL podcast. You heard our Eagles Niners chat. It's now time for our second championship game preview. And this time it's the turn of the AFC as the Chiefs number one seed host the third seed AFC uh, third seed Cincinnati Bengals. Now with me, I've got two returning guests who came on last week. First of all, in the red corner, we have Brad. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How's things? All good? Yeah, not bad. Um, yeah, I watched your game in the Hippodrome in London, um, so enjoyed that. Uh, the venue, way, more that than, yeah. way more than even a fair than the next game was in the Hippodrome. But, um, I mean, came with a prize. I had a nightmare journey home as a result. But, um, but, yeah, it was good to watch it in there. There was a couple of Chiefs fans in there, but there weren't. You know, I went there exactly a year ago, actually, the day that you know, Rory's boys beat the Titans. And there was a big you know, Titans group there. It was a big atmosphere. And when the Bengals were... Beating the Titans was getting really, really loud, but I found this year it wasn't quite as on a on on a Saturday night, which I thought would be better because there's no work the next morning for a lot of people. I was yeah. let down by that. It wasn't quite. I brought two friends along. I brought Naeem, a friend of the show, and a friend of mine anyway, and his girlfriend came along, and it was just not quite what I thought. I thought it was going to be like a massive. You know, I've been there for the, after the London yeah. games. I've been there for the playoffs last year. Went there for Super Bowl. Amazing atmosphere. Uh, but even though I've been on Saturday before, it wasn't quite. What I'd be, but you know, I enjoyed the game regardless. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping, if I'm honest, my, I, my, I mentioned it in a tweet the other day that my favorite player in the league that isn't a dolphin is Patrick Mahomes. So I'm sort of I'm hoping for a Chiefs win on Sunday. Um, speaking of which, in the orange corner, we have a returning guest. We have with us Rory Joe uh, Daniels. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, thank you. Not too bad. Good stuff. And we were just talking about, um, off the air about you know how the season's gone for you guys and how you enjoyed last week. I mean, Keeping with you, Rory, I mean, you ended that game last week. We talked about our podcast. I mean, you had the Bengals winning, but I had the Bills winning. I mean, a lot of people had the Bills winning, and those who had the Bengals winning were not expecting it to be such a one-sided defense, and such a comfortable game for the Bengals. But what was your take on what was a, firstly, a really weird performance from the Bills, but also just how impressive, especially the defense were um, for Cincinnati? Yeah, I think. We've seen it before, and obviously we've done it with the the Chiefs a couple of times, where the defensive display that that's been produced and and what Lou Anarumo comes up with week to week, um, is really effective. He, he keys in on on what the opposing offense does and really does take away um from from what they do. But I mean, I was really impressed with with some of the players because if you think Eli Apple um bounced around the league and he's finally found a bit of a home, he, he had a good performance. Cam Taylor Britt got got the Inception at the end as a rookie, and um, and we're seeing these contributions from from players who aren't. I think it's been made a lot of um, this week about how we've not had any sort of all pro players in there, which is 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 the unit as a whole. And um, there's not very many weak links, and um, but there, there also isn't many star, but what's considered league stars. So they are doing a fantastic job on that that side of the ball. And yeah, I thought it was fantastic. I think Lou Anarumo, um, I think we mentioned actually about his age, probably stopping getting a head coaching job. But I think that it's, um, you know, I think that defense is, I think, genuinely one of the best in the league. You know, not there's there's no big name, but there is with the likes of, you know, the, the Eagles and the Niners. But I think the organization that they have on defense, the way they're able to so quickly adjust plays, um, I think is fantastic. And I think that that is sort of is going under the radar because of the fact that everyone's focusing on the likes of Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, you know, all these players here. Um, and I think that they're sort of quietly going about their business. And really, I think that it's um, a defence that I think will cause a lot of problems for both the Chiefs and whoever they play, if they do make it that far as a Super Bowl. And I think it's going to be um, an interesting game. Um, over to you, Brad. Of course, you guys got a narrow win over the Jaguars. Of course, the main talking point was the injury to Patrick Mahomes, who... You know, at one point, Chad Henney came in and made some plays. I mean, first of all, how worried were you when, when Mahomes went down, like he did two years ago against the Browns? But also, um, just what your thoughts overall on the game and how you guys got the job done? Yeah, I'll start with the injury because that felt like that was it, game over. That was, you know, uh, Mahomes going out, we didn't feel as though... We, it's almost like you've lost your, your suit of armour all of a sudden. Um, and, you know, Mahomes hobbling around the field and, you know, he's a competitor. He wanted to get back on the field and he was arguing with the, uh, the, the, the chief staff on the sidelines just to get back on. Um, that's just the makeup of the guy. He just wants to keep playing no matter what, even if he's got a gammy leg. But um, 
Yeah, for Chiefs fans, and I mean, especially for fans in the stadium, there's a lot of people even tweeted out saying, that's it, uh, you know, we're not going to go any further than this now. Uh, the Jags are the, uh, the kind of team that could turn it on at any moment. And we, that was always a worry. I mean, it was it was still quite a close game. Um, Henny was, uh, was the star of the show with his 98-yard drive, which... Just kind of just calm the nerves a little bit, thinking, all right, we, we we've got a, we we've still got you know the, the the game plan. We've still got Andy Reid calling the plays, and we've got Eric Bieniemy calling the plays. We've still got other players in there involved, so it, you know we can get through this, and hopefully it's not going to be too much of a an issue with Patrick Mahomes' injury. But seeing him come back on, I think a lot of Chiefs fans had a bit of mis- mixed feelings because they were thinking, well, why are we why are we risking a, a long term injury now? You know, at this stage, uh, if he's okay and we're doing okay in the game, let's just leave him out for, until we need him. You know, so um, yeah, there was a lot of a lot of fingers crossed, I think, in the, in the kingdom. But the game itself, um, it went as pretty much as we well, most of us expected, really, because we respected the Jags this year. Um, because after seeing them earlier on in the season, I mean, I, I actually went to go and see them against the Broncos, and they were terrible. They were terrible at, at Wembley. Um, so it, 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 it was surprising to see the Jags kind of turn on the style a little bit uh, towards the back end of the season and obviously make a run in the playoffs. So we had to suddenly start respecting them, and we did that, I think. I think the Chiefs handled it well. They handled the injury uh, situation well as well, and uh, it looks okay for Mahomes. He's been walking around in practice. Uh, he seems unfazed by it, so all good. Yeah, I think we saw the, we literally saw a mirror image of this happen in the Browns game two years ago in the, in the exact same round, the divisional round. I mean, it was for a lot a lot later in the game, so you know, it was only really not much. Chad Henney didn't have really as long that as he would have as Mahomes as he would have done if he played the whole of the game the other day. But I think that you know we all saw what happened to Mahomes in the Super Bowl. He wasn't clearly healthy, and there was problems there. Yeah. And I think there. Do you think that's an issue for you in terms of playing the Bengals? Because we've, we've talked about their defense and how good that is. Mahomes, I think um, Andy Reid's come out and saying that maybe he's not going to practice as fully as maybe you would if he wasn't injured. And the fact that you know the Bengals have won our three and zero against Mahomes with Joe Burrow and their team. I mean, and just how good that defense can be. Do you, does that worry you in terms of if Mahomes is actually right or whether they're just saying the right things just to try and keep the fans happy? I'll be honest here. I think even with the fit Mahomes. The Bengals' defense really scares me. It really does. I think Anna Rumo's got them playing some whiz, like the witchcraft style of uh, of defense. That uh, it's it. A friend of mine was actually saying not so long ago. He was saying it, it felt like that there was fourteen defensive players on the field for the Bengals, and it feels like that all the time. Um, they cover well. They seem to get to the quarterbacks really well with three players, four players. You know, and and. They find a way, and Anna Rumo's got them just really kind of being one of the most deadliest defences in the league. And I think even with a fit Mahomes, he's going to have his work cut out against them. But, um, yeah, it's not great thinking that, you know, you might suppress a playbook a little bit if Mahomes is a little bit injured or, you know, it might scratch off some of the players there that might be might involve him being a bit more mobile. But um, I, think, I think it was Skip Bayless was saying that sometimes that can actually... You know, kind of refocus a, a, a quarterback to actually think about playing a different game, um, and making sure that he he is focused on actually doing the basics right instead of actually you know doing all the highlight plays that we see Mahomes do. So it could be a plus point. I don't know. Um, like I said, he's wandering around the the training camp and everything. He seems fine. He seems seems to be walking on it pretty okay. So and that's only been like three four days after the after the game. So. I'm confident he's going to be all right. Um, you know, there's, there's things they can do. They can strap it up and all sorts. But, um, yeah, it is a bit of a worry in a way because of the team that we're playing against um, because that Bengals defense is legit. Yeah, and it's a team that's not only got a legit defense, it's got a legit offense. And that's mm-hmm. um, something I want to get your thoughts on, Roy, because the Chiefs, you know, the, the defense has never really been one of the league's best. I don't think, you'd ever, you know, we'd, we'd ever see really the... We never I've seen some homes here. I've certainly never really seen a Chiefs team that's had a like an elite defense. I think even the year they won a Super Bowl, it wasn't exactly a defense that you know, would scare you. And I think that you know going into that when you you got likes of you know they've really you know the teams they've played really so far have really only beat also only the Jags played. They've only played Zay Jones, you know 
Marvin Jones. But when you coming when they're coming up against the likes of, you know, Jamar Chase, um, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, and Joe Burrow, do you think does that give you huge confidence the fact that not only is Cooper Holmes not be hundred percent fit? But also, does that give you confidence that they aren't the best in the secondary? The secondary can be exposed. And do you think that that gives you confidence going into this game that, you know, you could see the same thing happen with the Bills, that like you could see a game like that, or you could see a game where you beat the Chiefs once again, especially as you being 3-0 and under Burrow against Mahomes? Yeah, yeah, I think the thing with the Mahomes, just on the Mahomes thing from a Bengal point of view, is obviously, I think these things, it's a bit like our offensive line last week. I think when the injury happens or there's injuries occur in the game it's actually the game in which it's happened where it's probably the most worrisome because then you're, you're adapting on the fly the thing with the Mahomes thing is even if he isn't fully uh, like 100% I would expect that Chiefs um, offensive coaching staff to have a game plan in mind that's going to minimise the sort of impact of that so it's all, almost a week to prepare for that um, kind of makes it more of a worry for us because you know Mahomes knows how he feels the staff know how he feels what he's capable of and the, the, like you say the game plan's going to be adjusted accordingly so to me I think it's it's probably not going to be a big factor even if he isn't fully 100% um, and in terms of our offence yeah I think we, we feel we've got the confidence that we can take on any um, defence in the league but obviously the biggest concern for us will be somebody like Chris Jones in the middle middle there we're going up against our um offensive line so it's about being able to give Burrow the time and I think the Bills didn't have the, the pass rush to get to him and it allowed him to sort of dice them up a bit I will expect the, the Chiefs probably to get a bit more um, success against the offensive line and whether I mean they were keyed up they were they were going against the odds everybody had sort of written them off going into the week so those young guys sort of put a marker down and said no we're not having this we, we are good enough to, to play at this level whether they can do it Again, against probably a better pass rush, that's going to be key. Um, and I think we'll see different stuff. We saw Chase use a lot in the backfield and maybe not on those big field stretching things. Um, and we adjusted the game to the intermediate stuff we really were really slick on. Um, so I think we'll see different things again just to sort of absorb some of the pressure that the, the offensive line might end up giving, giving away. And for you, Rory, um... If you had to pick one player on the offense that Bo has to throw to or who's running the ball that you think will be the guy, if you are to win the game, will be the guy that makes the headlines. Which guy on offense are you predicting will have the game winning play or be the, the best player? I mean, who are you thinking could be the, the biggest threat to the Chiefs defense? Which player? It's difficult, really, isn't it? It's, I mean, Chase on paper, it should be Chase. You, you would say he's got the big play in him. Um, but one guy, obviously, that I've been super impressed with this year has been Hayden Hurst. And that's because simply you can't cover everybody. When you've got Higgins, you've got Boyd, you've got Chase, somebody like Hurst is just a bit of a, a cheat code because if you're asking your fourth best defensive cover player to, to cover Hayden Hurst, it's difficult in red zone situations and when you need a big third down, we've seen him come up big um, with those with those players. And we saw it with Uzama to a degree last year on our run. Similar thing, you can't cover everybody and the, the tight end becomes a real, really strong weapon. So I, I have a little sneaky feeling Hurst might have a, a good game on Sunday. OK, and then over to you, Brad. I mean, um, I have to credit, I think it was, it might have been yourself, Roy, it might have been Sam Moore when I went on this podcast, but um, Eli Apple, um, his PFF grade against coverage is quite bad. I think he's in the around the hundred mark in terms of ranking other defensive players. I don't. I think he, in terms of that, you know, that was the one takeaway from the defense of the Bengals against the Rams last year. Was that Eli Apple didn't Zach have his best game there? Do you think that maybe uh, over to you, Brad, into which player? I think first of all, you think you'd like to think the Chiefs players would target Eli Apple, and if they do so. Which player are you predicting that? Um, I think this obviously is one obvious candidate for you guys, but who are you th- saying is going to be um, the, the main guy to stand out and make those big plays for the Chiefs? Are you saying it's going to be Kelsey or is there someone else that maybe could step into the limelight and maybe shock people and, and come out of nowhere and have a have a great game? Yeah, you'd expect it to be somebody like Kelsey, the, the you know the the player he is, the best tight end in the league right now. He's, he's, he's such a phenomenal player and you know, you think everything would go through him because we don't have Tyreek Hill anymore. But um, Mahomes has been spreading the ball around so much this year. 
he's been really spreading it around and uh, it's almost forced him. I think, I think I mentioned it in the last podcast, actually, that um, taking that toy away from, um, from Patrick Mahomes now means that he is spreading it around a lot more. I mean, we've seen it so many times this season. He's using eight, nine, 10 receivers every single time. And it's through some like really kind of, um, you know, um, minuscule like, Roots and things like that, you know, um, that Mahomes is finding just ways to actually beat teams by giving everybody a taste of the ball. And and McKinnon's really been the one, I think, at the minute that has really kind of flourished out of this offense. Um, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's got a, a whole host of touchdowns this year as well. He's been uh, really great under the, in, in like the short game. Um, we don't really seem to use him as a running back much. We can, but we don't seem to use him that much. We seem to use him more of an, in a gadget way, but also in a more of, more of a receiving threat. So, if you know, I think it's going to be a big difference. I think this time than what it was from last year playing it, uh, against the Chiefs, uh, because there was just really two threats that the Bengals had to really cover, and it was pretty darn easy for them in the second half. And but this time. There's going to be so many different moving parts here. And Juju seemed very, very happy with uh, the fact that they've already come up with a game plan. They asked him in, uh, you know, in, the, in the press conference, I think it was this week, basically saying, are you happy with the game plan this time? And he went, it's fire. <laughs> <laughs> so he seems like he's really on board with it. Um, so if that is the game plan to spread it around even more like we have been all season, so be it, because it, it has worked really well and, and it's kept a lot of the defences guessing. If we can do that with the Bengals, then absolutely we can, uh, you know, we, we can do something here. But going back to like, you know, who do you target? I think we have to almost target Eli Apple, but he will get a lot of help over the top. And, and, and you know, the, the safety's there. The safeties are no joke in the Bengals either. So... You know, we, we have to be smart with this. I think we, we have to make sure we take the underneath routes, but also use that running game because we, we left that running game alone in the second half last year and it killed us. We, we, we thought if we just kept it in Mahomes' hand, he was going to take us over the line. It didn't happen. It didn't materialize because Anna Rumo schemes differently. Uh, um, he, ju he just came up with a way of, of beating Mahomes and the Chiefs just played straight into his hands. So we need to establish that run game just to kind of free up some of the receivers later on in the game as well and just kind of mix it up a bit, you know? Yeah, and I think it's um, certainly they'll be on the back of their minds, the, well, both teams, but certainly the Chiefs, the Chiefs players will know what happened last year. And, you know, it's just an incredible thing that we could be sitting here really, it should have been, it should have gone the way it should have done after that first half last year. The Chiefs could be looking at potentially they could within their fourth straight Super Bowl appearance. Is that it's their fifth straight AFC Championship game? They've had all of them, I believe, at home as well. They've reached two Super Bowls. They've got yeah. chances of three in five years. I mean, it's just it's an incredible achievement by like the Chiefs, and I think that they'll certainly be eager for that. And I think it's been you know, good for years now since they won it. So I think that's going to give them an edge. But I think equally the Bengals, I think whoever loses this game, I think will make it next year. I think that both teams are going to be in a Super Bowl in the next two or three years. I think both. This, for me, the best two quarterbacks right now in the league, and I think these are the best two teams in the AFC. I think to sort of look at how they play in the regular season, but also looking at actually to display the Bills. Both teams seem to have a better postseason mentality, a bit more of a clutchness when it comes to the when it really matters. But I think the Bills, that's their one downside, is that they have seemed to have even the back of the Jim Kelly days is the same thing, but they always seem to have been a team that you know at the final moments, um, you know, choke. And I think. For, for fans of football here, I think they may well be the Tottenham Hotspur of the NFL. You know, Harry Kane, Son, great weapons, and Diggs and Allen, but can never really yeah. get that trophy. Um, our final point of offense before we do go on to defense a little bit is the awards nominations that have been released. So, in terms of the MVP, uh, both Bo and Mahomes are in the top for the five players up for the award. Um, defensive player of the year, there is Chris Jones from the Chiefs, and offensive player of the year, we have got. Mahomes, but no Burrow. I'm not sure why that's the case. Um, no Andy Reid or um, Carl. Uh, what's his name? Um, what's his name? The Bengals coach. Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor. Sorry, that's one. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> they're not in coach of the year either. Um, so in terms of MVP, I mean, 
these are for me the two probably most outstanding candidates um, for the season as a whole. Obviously, one each for you two. Um, would you go for your boys as as the MVP, or would you say is anyone else you think maybe deserves it more? Um, uh, back to you, Brad. Um, who would you give the MVP to out of uh, Burrow, Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, and Justin Jefferson? Who are the five nominated? Yeah, it's a shame there's only like one right one wide receiver in all of that, isn't it? <laughs> it seems to be a QB award at the minute, which is it, it is a shame that the MVP is changing into like the QB uh, MVP award, but um. I've, I've got to go with Mahomes. I think the stats itself is he's, he's just been phenomenal. He, he's he's breaking all sorts of records as he as he goes, and you know he's he's hit over five thousand yards again in this year. Um, you know he's he's just re, kind of rewriting the record books as he goes. And um, there was a bit of a, a chase, I think, originally with himself, and I think Jalen Hurts, and I think uh, Tua was in there at some point, wasn't he? Um, so, but I mean, Burrow's been great. Uh, especially towards the back end of the season. Um, but I think the way that Mahomes has overcome the fact that he hasn't got that Tyreek Hill anymore, um, I think he's proved a lot that he can take this team Tyreek Hill-less uh, to uh, another AFC Championship game. So I, I think it, you know, throughout the season, he's been great. And, and like I said, 14 wins and what, three losses. Uh, and, Considering the, the the difficult start to the schedule in the year, I think he's overcome a lot this year, and I think it's he's got to be nailed on for it for me. Yeah, for those points, that's why I would also give him the award because you know, look, look at that team as good as they've been. You look at sort of the star elite players. You've got Kelsey, but on offense, really, you know, there's no one really else really that you know. There's not like you know, McKinnon and Edwards Hilaire aren't exactly you know that the scenes like an elite, elite, you know, elite running back. So you look at the receivers. McCall Hardman, Valdez Scantling and Juju aren't exactly, you know, players where you look at the likes of the Rams having, you know, uh, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods and Odell. You look at the Bengals this year having, you know, Chase and Boyd and Higgins. You look at the the Niners having all those weapons they have. And I think that it's also a credit to the Chiefs fact that really in those this year especially, they've had they got no real, you know, only real one star receiver and only really one star defensive player in Chris Jones. And they're getting 14 wins, number one overall seed in the AFC. It's just, I think you have to give Andy Reid as well a lot of credit, but um, also for Holmes, for how he's played despite losing, you know, what for me, for me is one of the best receivers in the league and someone I've loved mm. watching this year from a personal point of view. So to lose him and still perform the way he is, I think it's um, a huge credit. But also going to Joe Burrow, um, you've got to praise him as well. And I think he's done really well. And I think I have said before that I think he has got the Tom Brady gene. I think he's a winner. I think he knows how to win in big moments. And I think he has proved it in his two years. He's had, you know, every game on the road last year, the whole what playoff run was not in Cincinnati. Only one game this year will be in Cincinnati, and that was the Ravens game. You know, I think it's a huge credit to Burrow, how he's, you know, a guy who's had a big injury and come back and really hasn't looked back since. And really, he's been an elite level ever since he came back from that injury. So, even though I've, you know, even though I'm not the biggest fan of his personality, I think Joe Burrow is someone I've really loved watching. I think he is um, a real winner, and I think he is someone that I think you guys know. I, I, I still wish the day we'd be tanked properly and got Burrow, but you know, I think but for Bengals fan, you guys have got someone. Unless a horrible injury happens that ruins his career, I think Joe Burrow is actually going to be the guy, as well as Mahomes, and I think you know them two will be. I think Josh Allen will come back as one who'll get better, but I think those two especially will will be the guys everyone looks at as the guys in the league. And I think these two will be battling in AFC, AFC title games, I think, for years and years. Um, Rory, on to you. Would you give the Burrow the homes or is there anyone else you say would deserve to what deserves to do a bit more? Uh, well, I think, the thing, I think the thing with Burrow is we've seen in the last few weeks that he has that within him now. And I think he's put that to bed. I think he's got MVP atten- uh, potential. Um, but I think, yeah, unquestionably, if you take the season as a whole, obviously there's a very had a shaky start. We had a few losses against teams we shouldn't be, shouldn't have been losing against. Um, and I just think Mahomes and the Chiefs have just been so sort of metronomic. Really, they've just just every week uh, from a from a not from a Chiefs fan perspective, we look every week and you sort of just think, oh yeah, Chiefs, yeah, just keep on rolling. There's no <laughs> no questions there. Yeah. That's how it feels. And and really, they're the blueprint for for us as an AFC contender 
um, they're sort of the mark that you need to get to. Um, and obviously seeing Mahomes get the big contract and then then being able to kick on and continue what they're doing is is the blueprint that we need to follow because we're going to have to pay Burrow and then we're going to have to find another way of doing it and we will lose weapons on both sides of the ball. Um, we, you can't help but, but do that. And, and if we can adapt as well as the, the Chiefs have done while losing sort of the likes of Tyreek Hill, then I think you can only be pleased with that and that's that's what we've got to aim for so yeah Mahomes for me and um, I think he's been fantastic and he's just he, he's the best player in the league plain and simple yeah I agree I think that um you know I think that the Bengals window is sitting now because I know there's talk of them you know the reason why they named it the Pikeville Stadium was because they need some money to afford to pay Barrow and I think that's um, a lot and obviously the owners have always been known as being quite a stingy franchise. I think there's been a lot of talk that over the years, if, you know, even when Andy Andy Dalton was pulled back and even Carson Palmer. So um, yeah, I think the window is certainly there for the Bengals now. So I think that I think the Chiefs will be there again and again, and I do think that they prove that they can lose weapons still be good, but not every team can do that. And you've seen a lot of teams that have good windows, and then players go in free agency or, and stuff like that. So I think the Bengals certainly have to try and win it now. Um, and this is a cheap thing. Another thing I've seen, a number one seed was 14 win, talked about as le- as less as the Chiefs. I mean, you know, everyone's talking about the Bills, the Bengals, the Niners, the Eagles, the Dolphins for a few weeks. But no one really talked about the Chiefs, which is surprising. I was surprised at that because, you know, 14 wins, um, you know, I think was, was an exceptional achievement and no one was really talking about it. And I think that, um, again, that's just a credit to how his team rolling and that they don't really, especially now the likes of Hill and Matthew are gone, there's no real... As far as I'm aware, many trash talkers besides maybe Juju. Um, so I think that, yeah, they've gone about the business really well. And they've, I think, yeah, the Chiefs are for me a team that any sports franchise has to look at and, and expect and be amazed at the way they've done it. Uh, but we are going to head to a break. And when you come back, we're going to talk about defence and offensive line. And then Brad and Rory are going to make their predictions, as well as myself, as to who wins this game. Hello and welcome back. We are back from our break and now we're going to talk about one for me, I think is actually one of the big battles of this game. It's between the trenches. Um, you know, Burrow was the sixth most sacked quarterback this year and up against him this weekend is a guy I've just mentioned before the break, one of the three contenders for defensive player of the year in Chris Jones. I mean, it's a fascinating battle. Of course, last year was a big narrative after Super Bowl was a Bengals offensive line. We've seen improvement this year. He's not been the most sacked quarterback like he was before. But then the Chiefs, you know, we've mentioned a second there, maybe not being the best, but their defensive line has really good players. I mean, it's um a great D line. So in terms of that, we'll go to you first, Rory. Um, how do you see? I mean, we 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 mentioned last week the fact that it was injuries potentially. Lyle Collins and others, you know, uh, had injury concerns. You know, and he dealt well against the Bills. Really, I think you guys shocked everyone. Your line was actually really good, and I don't think, from my memory, Barbara was sacked too many times in this game. Um. But for that, in terms of up against the Chiefs team and Chris Jones and the like, um, how do you see the the Bengals O line dealing with with this uh, Chiefs D line? It's going to be difficult again. I think every game from from this part on is going to be difficult, especially when you sort of dealing with we've got young players now. Um, Jackson Carmen at left tackle had a had a very strong game um, against the Bills, but it's. Uh, consistency was his issue. He's been better since we've we've let him play at tackle, which is where he played when he was in college. Um, we tried to play him at guard a little bit last year, didn't work. Um, and then we brought in Volson, obviously a rookie at guard, um, and then Max Sharp in. He's playing at the other guard spot, um, and we think we've got Adenogy as a, as our right tackle, who's obviously a developing player for us. Um, and Karras in the middle at centre is the one that's sort of holding it all together, the leader. Um, it is going to be a weak spot, and I think they are scheming that you'll see a lot more bodies. We saw it last week, Mitchell Wilcox making big blocks. You'll see P. Ryan used a lot um, on certain downs, pass protecting blocks. Obviously, Mixon's not a, a great pass protector, um, so you'll see plenty of that. I know we, we moved up Devin Asiasi from the... Uh, practice squad, so it, we, we, you know that you will see tight ends blocking and, and trying to give a lot of help to the offensive line, and it'll be it'll be difficult. And I think they'll have to use plenty of wrinkles and extra linemen here. We used six linemen, I think, from six to seven snaps last week. So all that sort of stuff, anything you can do, anything you think of that's going to sort of batten down the hatches and see if we can we can just give Barrow enough time to 
to cut through the Chiefs' defence. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned P.I. because I actually have him in one of my DraftKings lineups this weekend. So I'm hoping he can um, even be getting like seven points or something. Um, yeah, he was, he was cheap. So, um, yeah, got Seven him. yards would be good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah, I mean, he's got some value. Because remember, they used him in that one of his plays late on in the Super Bowl. And I think that was um, a questionable decision to use him. On um, the one of the final plays of the game, I think that was the one. I think that was the one where Aaron Donald got the sack and did the whole the ring dance. So, um, so yeah, I think that one thing we saw with the Bengals, I, I liked actually in this game. Welcome back to offense. I do apologise, but I think the one a lot of plays were, were really long, drawn up plays. He had like ten minute drive, eight minute drive, four minute drive, and I think that's that was the key to beating the Bills was to keep the offense off the field. And I think that is really how the Bengals need to do the same against this Chiefs team is that if you keep Mahomes off the field, I think that, um, you know, I think there's a great chance you can win this game. But then on the flip side, look at that Chiefs defense. They may not be able to. You look at the likes of, you know, I mentioned Chris Jones, uh, Frank Clark, Kalaftis, all, all these players they got on defense, Willie Gay, you know, even then they're not, you know, they're not these standout names apart from Chris Jones, but I think these are players that are still very, very good and very, um, you know, get a lot done in the league. And I think that it's... Um, for you, for you, Brad, we all saw the blueprint last year and how to beat the Bengals was through the trenches, was through getting to the O-line and getting to Burrow. And I think that you almost look at that and think that's how we can win. And all that all's well to look at how it collapsed last year on defence and maybe using that as inspiration going into this year's AFC Championship game. That, that for me, is definitely the key to winning this game against the Bengals. We have to get to Burrow. We, we just have to get to him. Um, we never got to him at all in the previous AFC Championship game. And that's one of the main things that, that killed us because if you give Burrow that that amount of time to carve you up, he will carve you up and he will he will take the chances that he needs. And he, he only needs a glimmer of a chance and he will take it. And and not being able to get home and then almost kind of like overloading the kind of trench a little bit more as well, just to try and force something to slow him down, it just left the back the back end just so wide open that we can't have that happen again. We've got to be really smart about this. And, you know, if uh, if we can't get to him, I think we just have to kind of like give it up as a bad job and just m- almost rely on the uh, the defensive backs to actually make some plays against some pretty darn w- good wide receivers. So it, it, it's, it's, it's never easy winning a Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, this game is one of those games that, that you look at and you think, this is really a, a defining moment in this kind of game because... These two teams are so well matched. Um, you know, like we said, the Bengals are probably edged yet a little bit in the offensive side because of the weapons that they have. You know, tremendous weapons they've got in, in Jamar Chase, um, Mixon, and and even P Ryan. Like we were saying, you know, he's he's had a he's had a good season. So the the Chiefs' defense really needs to be smart about it, not try and rush things too much. Just kind of, yeah, the sole aim is just get to Burrow and. I think we've got the players there that can create that pressure. I mean, Carl Aftis is, yeah, he's a rookie, but he's been causing so much havoc on that other side that it's been freeing up the likes of uh, Frank Clark and, you know, uh, Chris Jones. I mean, Chris Jones through the season has been phenomenal. He's got some like 15 sacks, I think it is. So, you know, it, it, it's working. Whatever we're doing, it's working. And we've seen, we're now seeing the likes of Frank Clark making an appearance in the playoffs. He, he only seems to appear in the in the playoffs. So... I'm looking forward to seeing him again doing his thing, but um, Chris Jones is definitely one. He's a wrecking ball. Um, if the you know if the Bengals' offensive line pair up on him, it's going to free up somebody like Dunlap. It's going to be free up somebody like Carl Aftis and even Frank Clark. So that is definitely the key. And if we can get to Burrow a few times, then yeah, I, I, I think the Chiefs are in for a good chance. Yeah, certainly is an interesting interesting matchup. Now I won't ask you, Brad, because you all know how good Andy Reid is. But I've got to ask you, Roy, about this. Zach Taylor, he's had two back-to-back AFC title games and potentially two Super Bowls, one all he's had. Is he a good coach or is he being always carried by this good, really good offence and uh, Aramuno in the defensive schemes? I think he is a good coach. Um, and I think he's certainly developed into into better than what, was expected, um, and I think the play calling's got a lot better this year. I know there were 
there was some call for him to, to maybe lose that, pass that over to, to Brian Callahan and, and focus more on being the sort of CEO. Because um, I think that is what Taylor's best at. I think his overall ability to, to bring a squad together, I think the players really um, have warmed to him. They sort of, they're, they're playing for Taylor. He has that about him. He, he, he will lead men. Um, the question marks were around sort of control of the game and questionable calls and decision making on you know what we should be doing in third and short and, and stuff like that and it, he's he's ironed those, those wrinkles out um without actually having given up play calling so I think he has developed into a very good coach and it's to be expected I suppose from somebody as young as as that he wasn't actually um an offensive coordinator before he came to us I don't think he was he was part of the Rams coaching staff but he wasn't the offensive coordinator in that team that went to the Super Bowl. So he he sort of learnt on the job, and um, but yeah, no, I think he's he's turned into a very good coach, and I'll hold my hands up. I wasn't very confident after the first couple of seasons, um, but yeah, no, he's turned it around, and I think yeah, I think he I think he'll have the chance at the Bengals. They'll give him a long leash, so even if he does have a couple of down years, they will stick with him. So he's got a good opportunity there to to be a head coach for a long time. Yeah, I mean the fact he gave Marvin Lewis so long, considering how mediocre a lot of that time was and the fact that he's made two Super Bowls one and the, the other, other two years one was in a rebuild year and one was you know, in a, the year where your number one overall pick gets injured in a 10th game so I think you have to give him credit for that I mean you have to have to shout out Ollie Thornton another Bengals fan friend of the show who works for obviously he's part of the Nat Coombe show which I I've mentioned before in this podcast I, I work on social media for and he came on my podcast no on their podcast he was saying that he is the Gareth Southgate of NFL head coaches. I think he's got a point because I don't think he's got the same level, you know, Shanahan, the Andy Reid, the McVeigh's, and that. I don't think he's got that, but I think what he's got, which Southgate also has, is a great leader of men sort of mentality. He's a great sort of um, man manager. I think, you know, Southgate, he really worked hard trying to build a rapport between the players and the media, and that's obviously worked tremendously since. And I think that what I loved seeing last year, as well as on the most recent win, was that. You know, Cincinnati bar, uh, he went to and he was sort of, he brought the game ball to the bar in Cincinnati. And, you know, he was he was there when he was singing the Who Day Bengals song. You know, he was all there and he, he just gets the people. And I think he gets the city. And I think that, you know, I think he'll be, if, if, if he can go all the way, I think he'll be a legend in that place forever because he's just, I think what he's done in terms of, you know, I've been in the city. It's not exactly, you know, it's not on Miami. It's not on LA. It's not New York. It's not a, poorest destination Cincinnati so and probably not a big attraction for players but I think now with what he's done as well as the players that he's brought in and he's brought in the right, and also in fact he's brought in the right coaching staff I think he's made it actually now a very actually attractive proposition for players I think players will now actually want to go to Cincinnati because they know they've been to two straight AFC games they know they've got Burrow and all these great offensive weapons they know they've got a great defensive coordinator and I think that what he's done in bringing in these coaches and sort of getting the feel good factor in the city, I think you've got to really praise Zach Taylor for this. And I think that, you know, I think also you look at the whole thing with the Demar Hamlin. I think the way he dealt with that with Sean McDermott was brilliant as well and really commendable. And I think that, you know, I think he is. You know, I've mentioned I've mentioned before earlier in other podcasts that I'm not the biggest fan of Jim Burrow as a person. I think if they were to win the whole thing, I'd be happy most of all for for Zach Taylor because I think he is. Probably the nicest, nicest man in the NFL in terms of head coaches. I think he really is a very respectable guy, and I think I've got a lot of praise I want to give him. Um, but we are now time. It's now time for the final segment of the podcast, which is of course the prediction times. So we will give both Brad and Rory the chance to predict who they think is going to win the game, and if they want to, a score as well. And then I will chip in with my prediction right at the end. So back to you, Brad. Who's going to win this game? Uh, Chiefs are going to win it. They're going to find a way to get the Burrow. Uh, it's going to be a very tight game um, to a point. And I think the Chiefs are going to win it 31-24. Ooh, okay. Now, of course, next well, our Super Bowl episode, we're going to have a fan from each team come on the podcast to preview their Super Bowl. Now, I'll let you both be on regardless. I'll get one of you to do a soundbite. Whoever doesn't make the episode, and I'll get a lot of different people whose teams aren't involved will do, also do soundbites. Rory, are you going to be giving me a soundbite or are you going to be giving me a Zoom appearance? Yeah, I'm going to be giving you the, the full 30, 30 to 40 minutes next week. I can, uh, I can assure you that. Um, <laughs> I, I think it'll be tight as well. Uh, I think it's going to be a nerve jangler. It's going to be one that's going to be, might be after watch it through your, 
through your hands. You know, it's going to be one of them. It's going to be every every play, every down is going to matter. Um, and I think it'll be, I'm going to go 34-31. I think we we'll might need to have a comeback and I'll say a late defensive turnover or even defensive touchdown from us and then a field goal to seal the deal from uh, McPherson. Okay. Now, who do I think is going to win? Now, we gave um, our predictions in the Niners-Eagles episode. I did say it'd be a walk-off touchdown that would win the game. Check it out if you want to find out who I said would win that game. I don't think it'll be a walk-off this time. I think it could be one touchdown difference. I'm going to go for a 34-28 to win. But who's going to get the winning touchdown? Which player? Now, the player who's going to get the winning touchdown is going to be Jamar Chase. I think the Bengals are going to win, and I think they're going to make the Super Bowl for the second year in a row. I would love the Chiefs to win, because I've said it before, that my favourite player who isn't the Dolphin is Patrick Mahomes. You know, I went to the Chiefs this year. I absolutely love Mahomes, so I really want to see him win a second ring. And I would love that, you know, and I think it'd be a great thing to see. But I just think that it feels like the Bengals' time. It feels like everything's there. Momentum is there. They're in form at the right time. They've they've beaten the Bills on the road you know they've done a great job recently I think that I just think the Bengals will just have enough just because I think they've got a better defence and probably more offensive weapons spread out so yeah I think that overall Bengals but I think it'll be I think it'll be a good game I think it'll be definitely more high scoring than the Niners Eagle I think that'll be a bit more of a defensive battle but I think in this game I do think that the uh, Bengals will sadly win um, so yeah, that, uh, <laughs> sadly I mean, win. Yeah, yeah. I I I want the Chiefs to win. I had to, I had to, I saw a tweet from Matt Cullen uh, on Twitter, and he said, out of the eight teams left in the NFL, who would you have as most like most you, you most want to win it and least want to win it? And I had the Cowboys number one, I must say, because I've not seen them win one. But I had the Chiefs second and the Bengals last. So <laughs> you can see where I want to I want to I want to happen in this game. But uh, but yeah, this has been the end of our episode. So first of all, um, thank you, Rory, and thank you, Brad, for coming on. No problem. Thanks for having us. Well, the pleasure's all mine. And this has been the Across the Pod NFL podcast. This has been Andy, Rory, and Brad. And we will see you guys for our championship game review. See you then. Bye.